Where do Romanians really come from? For centuries, this has been one of Europe's greatest mysteries. Some say Romanians are the last true descendants of the ancient Dacians. Others believe their roots go even deeper, back to the very first people who lived in the Carpathian Mountains, long before Rome was ever built. Now, for the first time DNA is giving us real answers, and what scientists have found is shocking. So stay with me until the end because we're about to explore the hidden truths of Romanian DNA. And before we dive in, let me ask you a question. Do you think Romanians are the last Dacians? Tell me your answer in the comments. Thousands of years before anyone spoke a single word of Romanian, before the Romans and Dacians, this land was already alive. The valleys and rivers of the Carpathians, the plains of Wallachia, and the forests of Transylvania they all carried the footprints of Europe's first farmers. Archaeologists call them the Cucuteni Tripilia people, one of the most advanced Neolithic civilizations on the continent. They built massive settlements, some larger than ancient cities in Mesopotamia. Long before Greece or Rome, these people were already shaping clay, planting wheat, and painting symbols that still puzzle scientists today. But they weren't alone. In the caves and hills lived another group, the hunter-gatherers who had survived here since the Ice Age. For thousands of years, they roamed the forests, hunted deer, and fished the rivers that cut through the Carpathians. When these two groups met, the farmers from the south and the hunters from the north, something new began. A quiet fusion, a slow blending of worlds. Their bloodlines mixed, their customs merged, and from that ancient meeting, the foundation of the Romanian people was set in motion. But everything changed when a new wave of people arrived. From the east, beyond the Black Sea, came the Steppe Riders. They were the Yamnaya, fierce herders from the Pontic Caspian Steppe. These were not farmers. They lived with their animals, moved with the seasons, and rode horses before most of Europe even knew what a saddle was. Many scientists now believe that this was one of the biggest population movements in human history and its mark is still in the blood of modern Romanians. If you could look deep into the Romanian genome today, you'd find traces of those ancient writers. The same steppe ancestry that once gave birth to Indo-European languages, the very family that includes Latin, Greek, Slavic, and Sanskrit. In other words, when you hear the Romanian language today, you're also hearing an echo of those ancient horsemen, thousands of years old. Centuries passed, civilizations rose and fell, but one people stayed rooted here longer than almost any other, the Dacians. They were the heirs of all who came before, farmers, hunters, and steppe riders, a people forged by the mountains themselves. The Dacians didn't leave behind empires or marble cities, they left something deeper. Their stories spoke of gods who ruled from mountain caves, their spiritual leader, Zalmoxis, was said to have taught them that the soul never dies, that death was just a passage to another world. To outsiders, they were fierce and wild. To themselves, they were free. The Greeks called them wolf people, believing they could turn into wolves before battle. And in a way, that myth captured their nature, untamed, loyal, and fiercely protective of their land. Even today, the Romanian word dak still carries a sense of pride as if the mountains still whisper the name of their ancestors. In the year 106 AD, Emperor Trajan led the Roman legions across the Danube. His target, the Kingdom of Dacia, a land rich in gold, forests, and stubborn warriors. The war was brutal. Dacia's king, Decebalus, fought fiercely, but was eventually defeated. Rome claimed victory, and Dacia became one of its richest provinces. But Rome didn't just take the land, it transformed it. Thousands of Roman soldiers, settlers, and craftsmen moved in. They brought Latin, Roman laws, architecture, and culture. Over time, they intermarried with the native Dacians. And out of that fusion, something new was born. The language of the conquerors mixed with the blood of the conquered. Latin words echoed through Dacian valleys, blending with older sounds, evolving through centuries. That's why today, Romanian stands alone in Eastern Europe, 
a Latin language surrounded by Slavic neighbors. It's a living fossil of Rome's forgotten East. Yet the Romans didn't stay forever. By the third century, Rome began to crumble. The legions withdrew, the empire weakened, and new waves of invaders began to pour in. But something remarkable happened. Even without their Roman protectors, the local people, the mix of Dacians and Romans, didn't disappear. They endured. They carried their language, their customs, their bloodlines through centuries of chaos. Historians still debate how much of the Roman population stayed after the empire's retreat, but the genetic evidence shows a clear truth. There was continuity. The DNA doesn't lie. Modern Romanians carry strong traces of ancient Balkan ancestry, Roman genetic influence, and even the distant echo of the Yamnaya steppe riders. As the centuries rolled on, the Great Migrations reshaped Europe. From the north came the Slavs, spreading across the Balkans. From the east came Avars, Bulgars, and other nomadic tribes. Each group left a faint genetic footprint on the land that would become Romania. The Carpathians stood like a natural fortress, protecting its people, but not isolating them. You can see that blend not only in DNA, but in faces, languages, and culture. Dark hair and light eyes. Slavic words in a Latin tongue. Folk songs that sound both Eastern and Western at once. It's as if the land itself never chose one side. It carried them all. When scientists began studying Romanian DNA in recent decades, they discovered something fascinating. Despite all those migrations and invasions, there is a core continuity, a line stretching back thousands of years. The oldest layer comes from the Neolithic farmers, the same people who built the Cucuteni Tripilia settlements. Then, the Indo-European steppe ancestry adds its mark, the warriors from the east. Then, the Roman genetic influence joins in, Latin settlers mixing with the Dacians. And finally, the Slavic and Balkan waves shape the modern population. Each era adds something new, but never fully replaces what came before. That's why Romanians are genetically closer to other Southern Europeans, like Italians and Greeks, than to their Slavic neighbors to the north. It's a sign that the Roman and Dacian roots still run deep, even after 2,000 years. So when you look at the face of a modern Romanian, you're looking at history itself. The resilience of the Dacians, the ambition of Rome, the endurance of those who survived every invasion and never forgot who they were. Scientists might describe it in percentages and haplogroups, but behind those numbers lies something deeper, a story of survival. Because this land was never empty, it was always full, of people, of migrations, of life blending into life, and somehow, through all that chaos, something unique was born. A people who carry both the mountain spirit of the Dacians and the civilized legacy of Rome. A culture that feels ancient, yet alive. When the Roman legions crossed the Danube, they weren't just expanding an empire, they were stepping into one of Europe's oldest lands. It was the year 106 AD. Emperor Trajan had one goal, to conquer Dacia. For two long, brutal wars, the Roman legions fought against King Decebalus, the last great Dacian ruler. The battles carved their memory into the stone of mountains. Rome won. But victory came at a cost. Thousands dead, cities burned, a kingdom broken. Yet something unexpected happened in the aftermath. Instead of destroying Dacia, Rome rebuilt it, they sent colonists, soldiers, and craftsmen from every corner of the empire, Italians, Spaniards, Gauls, Syrians. They built new cities, roads, temples, fortresses. Latin words began to echo across the Carpathian valleys. Roman customs replaced old rituals. And slowly, the blood of the conquerors and the conquered began to mix. That's how a new people was born, part Dacian, part Roman a people who spoke the language of Rome, but lived with the soul of the mountains. The Romans ruled Dacia for less than two centuries, but that was enough to leave a genetic and cultural mark that never faded. Even after the empire crumbled, the language survived. They kept speaking a Latin tongue, slowly evolving into what we now call Romanian. 
That's why today, Romania stands as a Latin island surrounded by Slavic seas. It's one of history's greatest paradoxes. When the empire fell everywhere else, it somehow lived on here, hidden in the mountains. The DNA confirms this theory. Modern Romanians still carry Roman genetic signatures, alongside native Balkan and Dacian ancestry. Rome may have vanished from the maps, but in Romanian blood, it never really died. Then came the Great Migrations. Between the 5th and 10th centuries, wave after wave of tribes moved across Europe. Goths, Huns, Avars, Slavs, Magyars, each passing through, leaving traces behind. For the people of ancient Dacia, it was a test of survival. The mountains protected them, but no wall could stop history. New languages surrounded them. New powers rose and fell. The Slavs arrived in great numbers, settling across the Balkans. Their culture and speech spread far and wide, from the Black Sea to the Alps. But in the Carpathian Basin, something unusual happened. The old Latin tongue persisted. Instead of disappearing under Slavic influence, it absorbed it. Romanian today carries hundreds of Slavic words, yet its core remains Romance, like Italian and French. It's a reminder that cultures can mix deeply, without losing their essence. Genetically, this was a time of blending. The Slavic migrations added new layers to the Romanian gene pool, particularly from the east and north. Traces of steppe ancestry also returned through nomadic groups like the Avars and Bulgars. When scientists mapped the Romanian genome, they found exactly that, a living mosaic of Europe's history. The Y-DNA lines show roots tied to both the Balkans and the ancient steppe. The MT-DNA, passed from mother to child, carries traces from the earliest European farmers, and the autosomal DNA, which captures the full mix, reveals one of Europe's most balanced blends. Roughly half early European farmer, a third step, and the rest, Balkan and Slavic influences. In simple terms, Romanians are old Europeans, carrying bloodlines that reach back to the dawn of the continent. These discoveries surprised even the researchers. For decades, Historians debated whether the modern Romanians truly descended from the ancient Dacians or if they were newcomers who adopted Latin speech later. But genetics has given the answer, and it's clear. There is strong continuity between the ancient Dacians and the modern Romanian population. The DNA shows it. The archaeology supports it. This land's population never truly vanished. It endured, adapting through every invasion and empire. In fact, compared to many parts of Europe, Romania's genetic heritage is unusually stable, preserved by its geography, isolated by its mountains, yet enriched by its crossroads. The history of Romania itself, from ancient Dacian warriors and Roman settlers to Slavic migrations and Balkan empires, every chapter has left its mark on the Romanian genetic code. If you've enjoyed this journey through the unique DNA of Romania, let us know in the comments. Have you taken a DNA test and discovered some Romanian roots? Or maybe you've always wondered whether your family's story traces back to the mountains of Dasha or the legions of Rome. Share your stories, we'd love to hear them. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more history and ancestry content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching. And until next time, la revedere. Goodbye for now.